guys, this is Mikro. I'm making a video that's sort of a continuation of the last video where we're talking about some of the OPR changes and why certain things won't be meta, and this is like going into a more detailed approach as well as like giving some guides to perks that you should be looking out for and uh, I guess combos with weapons in general that might be good day one. I'm guessing that the meta will be a lot more open than it is right now, and it won't be as hard of a this build is a must have, this build is a must have to do the cleansing pot nerf. And on top of mages basically getting gutted with the changes to Ice Gauntlet, it's not like Ice Gauntlet isn't viable, but I don't think Ice Gauntlet is super viable in the way that it has been, where it's just always been the right secondary weapon. I think it's actually in the going to be in the spot which is, makes it a really good defensive utility secondary weapon but it's not really a a great option for most people that will be running something in that slot if that makes sense so these are this is like a post on the new world forum i came out yesterday and this talks about a lot of uh, well basically all the important changes that are happening in the ptr that will cause the PvP meta to shift. I think the, the big ones to talk about here, the ultimate chill, I talked about this the other day, this basically makes it so Ice Gauntlet can't be run everywhere, because without that ultimate chill perk working for everyone, there's not a huge purpose to running Ice Gems in your weapons anymore, nor like running the Ice Gauntlet in general, since the Ice Gauntlet will have a lot less utility for the army overall. A lot of these changes are like related to weapon swapping as well. Like you'll see that down here, where I'll have this post linked in the description, but you'll, you'll see that a lot of these skill perks will not persist on weapon swaps anymore. So this will make it so that you can't proc keenly empowered and avoid gauntlet per se, and then swap to ice gauntlet and drop a storm, and that empower will carry over to the ice gauntlet storm. It takes away some of that, like some of those shenanigans that definitely were helping people that had three perk weapons. But yeah, with the cleanse pots going to a 30 second cooldown from a 10 second cooldown, take away 25% of that because of refreshing toast that everyone has to run in order to be pvp competitive then you're at like 22.5 seconds per cleanse which will last five seconds so it's like you're, you're not going to be able to cleanse for like 15 seconds at a time which is enough time to definitely die in most metas which will be a reason to run the ice gauntlet if the ice gauntlet is to remain being used but that is the the only reason i could see to run the ice gauntlet is more of a selfish utility uh i'm staying alive standpoint so maybe it's still playable if you're on point and it's still good if you're on point because you that's the only way to actually get consistent cleansing but that is the only way i could see ice gauntlet being run it's not for the damage anymore it's for the defensive utility so i could go through some of these i think it's probably better just to leave it uh in the description talked about the ice got one and this weapon swap ones which is really big there's also like a big thing with the fire stuff too because with the empowered meteor shower if you can't swap off of that anymore it makes combos like fire stuff blunderbuss a lot worse but then that also got buffed in other ways which is kind of interesting and with the uh, diseases and rends lasting longer it's potential that fire stuff blunderbuss actually could work as well as like some of those greedier opr like one shot oriented builds that just do mass damage to clumps that used to be considered a pad might actually like have damage that sticks now because people are going to be disease capped and have large amounts of runs on them for extended periods of time. So yeah, those were the, the big changes I'd probably highlight. All these are just for let related to weapon swap things. This one's like kind of interesting with aerial transmission because this is a 30% disease and 10% weakened, so it's fairly significant. And it's a it's a three meter AOE, which is pretty big that lasts uh, six seconds. And anyone that walks through it's gonna get that debuff, right? It's on a fairly short cooldown, so that actually might be enough to make hatchet an okay secondary weapon. I wouldn't say great, but 
definitely okay. And then as well as uh, Shirking Energy didn't get... Oh uh, yeah, it's, pre it's pretty much gutted. Because if you have 110 stamina and then you're getting the extra 15, that will not change the difference between 3 rules and 4 rules anymore. So it's not actually like really doing anything. But it's still an okay perk. But jumping into some skill trees... I did say I, I will talk about like the Void Gauntlet Blunderbuss more, which is, I think will be the the primary weapons of like choice for the majority of like quote unquote mage players. I don't know if you're really considered a mage anymore if you're running a shotgun, but that's about as close as we'll probably get. You have a there's like a tree that I talked about before in other videos where it was like you have a very low con like 150 con and you do 200 strength, 150 int. And you're basically just playing for max damage output. And to, to run that, you run a tree somewhere like this. I left one point untouched because this is more of a flex point. Noteworthy is this running gun perk got fixed so the haste will apply after you actually reload versus during the reload animation. So it'll actually last a whole second. So that actually might be a very good perk. Ramp is, it seems good on paper, but when you play with it, it doesn't feel as good. Uh, future pointing is always a decent choice, and then all these other perks are basically useless. Futures and Endeavors is okay. Going to the other side, if you go Chaos, this is the tree that I I run right now, except for this Run and Gun, because Run and Gun is bad on live, but it might be actually really good on PTR version. This perk is just for fun, Not no one else really takes this, but this is like a build if you're running it as a, a point-oriented tank where Blast Shot can carry fights because it knocks people over that don't have grit, and then those people can get instantly deleted before they stand back up, so that's like a potential to, to carry there. I think the, the more typical way to, to run this build would be something like this, where you have one flex point. And most people would put that in the deep load, you could put it in the fast hands or run and gun next patch. Ramp, I, th I think, looks good again, but doesn't actually as good in practice. Void Gauntlet, this is what the tree will look like. I don't think this is going to change at all. You have one flex point here. I usually put it in the Forsaken Pact. A lot of people would put it in the Radiant Efficiency and then drop some, something like maybe like Leeching Agony. Uh, I, I don't think you really need the Radiant Efficiency if you're actually playing for a Refreshing Harvest, which is why I don't take it. You shouldn't really be audioing that much, so this perk is not really worth it. So your, your discussion is between like Forsaken Pact, Leeching Agony, and radiant efficiency for that slot usually. And all these other options on the Void Gauntlet aren't really practical. Void Blade's the closest to practical, and even then I'd say it's niche and very likely gets outclassed by every other melee weapon in the game because Void Gauntlet doesn't have grit. Going to Warhammer, this could work with Blunderbuss. So all these are basically things that work around near Blunderbuss. Like, I don't see a, a situation where Blunderbuss isn't meta, considering it's the only mage tool that didn't get nerfed and it was already very, very popular. I'm not exactly sure what the devs are thinking about not nerfing Blunderbuss, but that's probably the meta that we'll be in for a bit. And knowing New World, that will be the, the meta we're in for the next three months, because New World doesn't like to update their game very often uh, in terms of PvP. But this is like a rough tree. I there's probably a better tree that a melee player would like more. This is just like me going through and being like, oh, this seems like good utility, this seems like good utility. And there might be a practical situation where, like, say you don't want a light tack very often, and maybe these light tack perks are not worth running, and then like, you go into more damage. But with the interesting part about Wonder Bus is it can be int or strength based, right? So a lot of these, like, with the Void Gauntlet, there's a conversation, hey, do you want to go 200 in or 250 int? Because if you go 250 int, then that 250 int perk actually applies to the burning on the grenades, but doesn't actually apply to anything else, so it's like the most convoluted perk I've ever read. Versus if you go something like SNS, you go Great Sword, you go Great Axe, you go Warhammer, all of these will be like a 300 strength blunderbuss build that also runs this weapon, and you probably don't have much elemental damage, if at all. Unless there's a situation where you really want to play for the new rune glass gems, which do like 8% fire damage, and then you want to slot in the ones that do like your attacks do more fire damage. Then I could like kind of see it, where you go like 150 in at the 
the minimum so that you get that extra boost to elemental damage. But as it stands, most of these builds you'll want grit. You don't really need grit with a uh, warhammer because you have natural grit built into the tree except for Path of Destiny. But that is the only weapon like that. As well, I guess Great Sword's also like that. Great Sword has a lot of grit built into it. But I didn't make a, a Great Sword build thing for this video because it's gonna be something that gets tested a lot. I think the blocking tree with it is interesting, but might not be good. Fire Staff Blunderbuss, this would be like a, a nuker oriented roll. This would be a, assuming oh, there's a lot of people on point and assuming disease and run sticks and you, your entire job is just to nuke the clumps on point because people could actually be nuked now because they have disease and rend on them. The They are changing pillar of fire so that it is more consistent. So instead of giving a maximum of 75% cooldown reduction with the refreshing pillar of fire, it'll give a maximum of 60%, but you only need to hit two people with it. And then you throw that on a weapon and that you're going to be like near just spamming pillar of fires anyway. So I think something like this is interesting, noteworthy that you can't swap off Meteor Shower for that uh, bonus anymore So for to apply to your other weapon, which makes Fire Staff a lot weaker in general, but it might survive as a, a point nuking roll, or maybe the, the old Flamethrower Burnout Fireball Tree still works on a, an, an off point sort of thing, like Backline Harasser roll. That build doesn't get changed that much other than you can't apply the Meteor Shower to like your Ice Storm and pad with that. This is uh, what the Ice Gauntlet Tree will likely look like next patch. I think Frozen Touch is kind of a flex, Empowering Frost is kind of a flex, so these two could go wherever. This perk is okay, but if you're like new if you're doing neutrals with an Ice Gauntlet, you're generally not playing the build super well, so I could see something like this working. I could see something like this, which would be very tank oriented working. Frozen Touch is definitely underrated, but it was not possible to run this when you went for the ultimate chill passive before. Or the ultimate. But with the changes, both these ultimates are not super good, but they're okay. So I'd see something like you wanting to prioritize getting that cleansing tomb and that and these like refreshing frost defiant freeze and the, the shower. It's like that's probably gonna be more utility than ultimate chill will be at the at the point of next patch. There's also a case to go the Ice Pylon tree, I'd say. The Ice Pylon did get nerfed for some reason. A little confused by that, considering it was not played very often. But Ice Pylon does have a, a weird case of utility, where Ice Pylon is the only uh, like Ice Gauntlet ability in the game that has the potential to crit other than Ice Spike. So one thing that's kind of silly that you can do with this is you can stack Plague Crits on your Ice Gauntlet. And what that will do is it makes your Ice Pot one give the ability to land disease, and it's an AoE disease that procs very often if you're spamming dodge due to Pylon Refresh. Or Pylon Dodge. So that's like a, a build I tried a while ago, and it, it felt pretty good at the time, and but it definitely fell out of popularity. And I, I could see it being good in a point tank setup now, considering Ultimate Chill is not worth going for at all. Before the argument was like, why would you ever go for this when Ultimate Chill is better? Well, now Ultimate Chill is like basically useless utility, so I could see the argument for trying this out again. I don't see it being super good. At the time, it was really good, but I think they fixed this at this point, where if you pop, pop the Ice Pylon down, and then it shot once, and then you swapped to another weapon, it would continue to proc that Plague Crits, even though you didn't have the Ice Gauntlet out. But I think how it works now is you'd have to have the ice going out, so it's definitely a lot less utility than it used to be. That being said, the Refreshing Frost with Ice Pylon is naturally very powerful with Ice Shower and with Entomb. And then that will let you cleanse more debuffs and maybe stay alive long enough to actually be a, a point tank in the next meta with the Cleansing Pot nerf. And I guess lastly, some of these like... They have changed some of the rune glass, so I would say take a look at that if you haven't already. Uh, the weapon perk where you deal elemental damage on your weapon as like a dot for a few seconds just in general seems like it will be meta on every single weapon. I don't see it not working for any weapon, especially because if you there's no cooldown on it, right? 
So if you throw an AoE, like say you throw a, an orb out and it hits 20 people, then those 20 people are going to get this dot on them that does extra damage and then goes away. Or say you're playing Fire Staff and then you throw, you have Empowering Meteor Shower, right? That entire Meteor Shower is going to land this dot along with the, bur the burn dot from the <laughs> from the actual Empowering Meteor Shower. So that gets a, a little silly. And then you could stack that on top of having the the rune glass slotted in your armor, which I believe you could have five of those. So that's like 10% extra fire damage. So you throw that on top of a fire damage ring and yada yada. You can get to fairly high damage with fire staff blunderbuss, which is like a case for it being potential meta. Uh, well, I don't know if I'd say meta, but potential viable, I'd say. Just because it actually has like built in 15% extra fire damage, your your dots do more, your when I, if I go back to that fire staff tree, you you have like a lot of burning involved. The burning won't get cleansed now. The burning's gonna last longer. The burn's gonna give you fortify. The, so it's just like a lot of natural synergy there that I could see it working. I don't know if I would like full heartedly believe in it, but I could see it potentially working. I'd say Void Gauntlet is probably better in general. Uh just because this will be 15% rend, which is very nice. This will strip all your buffs and apply, give you everyone on your team stamina regen, as well as increasing your damage, which is very nice. So it's it's hard not to like the Void Gauntlet, because every ability in this tree has a lot of utility. There was that SMS thing I talked about a video ago where you could just heavy attack if you have plate crits and rending strikes, I think it's called which you can get on the same weapon for some reason because they're in different perk buckets and then that's like the same util as a vg so that could potentially be used with a couple other weapons too like i could see it being run with great sword because great sword you have the the block built into uh yeah i can go to that here you have the block built in the path of defiance so, and then that will there's also like a ren built into this as well so it's like if you're doing a heavy attack you are landing if they're shooting you, they're getting a 5% rend. If you hit them, they're getting a 25% disease and like a 14% rend. And the entire time you have reduced, you have Fortify built in your kit and all these other things. So I could definitely see that working as well with Blunderbuss. That's probably something I'll be looking to try, but I'm not as confident with it as I am with Sword and Shield because Sword and Shield has a faster animation with that. And I don't think you would want to go into Onslaught Tree for this and get the faster animation on heavies. Because uh, the blocking will, in general, be better. And then lastly, I made like a, a little cheat sheet that I, I'm talking about like perks here and like what you should have. At this point, I think everyone's on the same boat that Blunderbuss is going to be like the default primary weapon of next patch, like where it was Ice Gauntlet before. Like, you you always had an Ice Gauntlet, and then you would pick a weapon with that, with, like, very few exceptions. I think it's going to be, you pick a Blunderbuss, and then you in, you pick your secondary weapon of choice. With most of these Blunderbuss, you are probably going to be running Net Shot, as in a, due to it being an escape ability. And some of those other weapons, like Void Gauntlet, don't have a natural escape ability, so it just makes sense to run this. But if you're tanky enough, I could see people, like, going into Blast Shot and doing, like, the build that I enjoy running and have like started piloting with this sort of setup but lingering flow obviously not super not not a lot of people love the lingering flow i think it's it's enjoyable and very fun to run <laughs> and it could save you sometimes but not as popular but this this would be like the the tree i think most people would run next patch But anyways, Void Gauntlet Blunderbuss, uh, the way that you would play this, there's like a, a medium kind of assassin slash backline peel oriented version with 150 con. And then there is a standard version I'd say that has 200 con and has some degree of int strength split. With VGBB, you probably want most of that into int. I'd say you're, if you're doing the, the non-nuker oriented build where you're putting a, a lot of uh, trust in the blunderbuss and you would go like maybe a, a fire damage like oriented blunderbuss build or something like that then you would probably want to get to either 150 or 250 int 
just so that you could have the extra damage from the the fire dot on the, the grenades, which is like very weird to say, but that's not going to get cleansed as often now, so that might actually be okay. On top of like natural burns applying to those grenades from the rune glass, so that kind of inherently makes sense. So that's like, and you would be running the, the nuker build in either light or medium, most likely medium. Uh, light got nerfed as well with uh, if you get hit you it takes 1.5 seconds so it can start running again and medium it only takes a, like a second and heavy takes 0.5 seconds so heavy got buffed light got nerfed a bit there it makes light like a, very much so a, you don't want to get near the point sort of class which inherently makes sense but it's funny that they, it's taken this long for that to happen but anyways you'd want to be the must-have perks that you need to have are Scream, Oblivion, Grenades. Grenades could be on armor, it could be on weapon. I think if you're going in the Containment Tree, it should definitely be on armor. If you're going in the Chaos Tree, I could see it being run on both. Due to how many BBs are going to be run next patch, I'd say that putting it on weapon is a little bit less impactful. Unless you're like really, really spamming the cooldown, because other people will probably override it with other BBs. Exhaustive Net Shot. I think this perk's actually insane next patch and might make it so that you don't want to run blast shot in general because the the cleanse change if you have that on weapon it's a 57 percent stamina reduction on top of a 50 percent slow basically the, the person that you hit with that can't play the game unless they pop a cleanse pot and if they pop a cleanse pot then they're obviously vulnerable to other things so that inherently is very very good and I consider it to be, be a must-have upon next patch, but this patch it's just a good perk to have. A diminishing orb, this this patch is a must-have, next patch I think is a good perk to have. I think there's a little bit less of the defensive perks, but they're still going to be run obviously, because they're, they're good. And you won't be stripping cleanse pots as much now, which is the main reason why diminishing orb is so good, because you had the ability to strip that cleanse pot buff where you were immune to other effects. Azoth Blast got significantly buffed due to a glitch that was happening where the the actual bomb itself wouldn't heal you and the bomb does 100% damage and then this ability itself does like a, it does 50% damage times 5 shots so it's like 250% damage but the, the bomb is like very very consistent and can hit it in AoE right? And that's going to be hit, healing you for 14 to 24% if, depending if it's on armor or weapon now. So that's a very good perk to have and you have this cooldown up very often. I'd say Blunderbuss Warhammer I could see being viable on point just due to Warhammer being very very good in point, point in general. If you're running that you definitely need grenades. If you're running Exhaustive Net you'll, you'll need that. If you're running Blast Shot you don't really need the Blast Shot perk for it to be good. Crippling Blast Shot it's just so slow that gets applied but it is a nice perk to have especially because that can lead to malachi being triggered for yourself and other people due to them having a slow on them uh leeching path to destiny is also also a good perk to have if you run that build but will be hard to consistently proc if you're on point so there might even be a situation where you don't want to to run this like path of destiny and maybe want to run a, a different ability like arm, armor breaker is like a fairly popular one just due to this giant rend that gets applied like i could definitely see armor breaker being run there and it also has grit built into it which it could make it very viable and that that tree would be something like this but then you would need to take out a few things from this left tree throw them to the right in order to get this ultimate which makes it a little bit messy Blunderbuss Ice Gauntlet, if you are going to continue to run that, I imagine a lot of people will continue to run this, but once they realize that Ice Gauntlet actually isn't as good as it is, then people will start transitioning away from it. If you are running that though, you still need grenades, you still need Exhaustive Net Shot next patch if you're running that ability, which you don't have to with the Ice Gauntlet, right? Because you have a defensive built into Ice Gauntlet. A Deadly Frost is a good perk to have. And I'd say Pylon and Ice Storm are also a good ones to have there. The only 
weird part about Void Gauntlet Blunderbuss is this build's like very hard to survive with on point unless you're like good with utilizing the the fortify naturally present from Blunderbuss and Void Gauntlet. So I think this build, if you're running it on point, it's definitely like a, a heavy 200, maybe even 300 con if you have to, but hopefully just 200 con, and then you're doing like a, a standard like maybe 50, 250 split with most of it in the int. You could do less, more strength and then less int, but in, in heavy, your your damage is mostly from the the abilities, which tends to, to favor int a little bit more. And I think that's all I, I have for this one. In general, next patch, a lot of these weapons will be viable. Blunderbuss is still probably busted. Greatsword is probably busted. So those are the, probably the two most common weapons that you'll see. Most of the, the standard stuff won't change, though. Like, there will still be kill squad groups. There will still be life staffs. The world isn't ending. But it's just less ice stuff all over the field, which will be nice for some people and not as nice for others. And a lot less mages in general, I imagine, just due to Ice Gauntlet not being as prevalent and then people probably not looking to run Void Gauntlet, Ice Gauntlet as much since Ice Gauntlet doesn't actually apply a lot of utility. Void Gauntlet does apply a lot of utility, it's just, do you really want to run that with an Ice Gauntlet kind of thing? I don't, I don't know if that class fully survives. It might be a, a more niche role than it is right now. And even right now, I'd say most commonly you have about six to eight Void Gauntlet, Ice Gauntlets in a war, and I imagine that number will drop between like to two to four. It will not be as common, especially if you run a couple of the Void Gauntlet Blunder Bus, because then you don't need as many Void Gauntlets anymore, and you can still have the, the same effect. So yeah, guys, let me, let me know uh, what you think. And I'll get back to you in another video. And we have seven days till patch at this point, so that's a little exciting.